Well, welcome to the Cinnabar. We just got in from the field from shooting a couple of dandy old black powder cartridge rifles. This Colt Lightning large frame or express model in 4585 that we're sighting in for deer season coming up. And then we did a, took a few test shots with a 1874 Sharps in 4070 straight wall that we've been doing some work on. And I promised while I was doing the sight in on this Colt Lightning that I would show our cleanup process for cleaning up black powder um, cartridge rifles. Now, there seems to be this stigma about black powder, about how, um, you know, it's just horrible to clean up. I don't want to shoot black powder because it's going to be terrible. And, you know, and, and some of the, the muzzle loaders and, and those kind of rifles, uh, it can be a, a real pain. You got to take everything apart. That black powder gets everywhere. I used to uh, do some Civil War reenacting with an 1859 Berdan Sharps model, paper cartridge Sharps, and that was nasty to clean up, I have to admit. You had to take the breech block out, apart, had to clean up everywhere in the action. Um, but the nice thing about cartridge rifles, if you're getting a good seal with between your cartridge and the chamber, nearly all of that black powder fouling is isolated between the front of the chamber and the end of the barrel. We get very little back into the action. If you're getting a bunch of back in the action, then you need to check it out and see, see what's going on because you're not getting a good seal or you're getting blow by somehow. Um, most of the time, there's very, very little gets past that front of that cartridge back into the, the even into the chamber area and certainly not back into the action area. So it's not a whole lot more difficult than cleaning up after shooting a, a smokeless cartridge. The big thing is, is that you know you can get away with not cleaning your your gun right away after shooting smokeless but you can't with black powder that residue is, is very corrosive and probably most all of you already know that so as soon as you get done shooting you need to get back in get that stuff cleaned out of there now there's a lot of different ways that you can clean up afterwards I, I, when I first started getting really serious about shooting some black powder cartridges, I got on YouTube and watched several different channels and some really experienced black powder shooters, and they all had their own way of doing it. And, and some of it was quite a little bit different. And they all had their pet product to, to clean with. Um, so it's really less about an exact method that you use as it is about getting in quickly, doing a thorough job with, with some kind of a cleaner that is, is going to work and get that, that corrosion out of there, and then some kind of a, a uh, good oil to we put on it at the end of the cleanup. Okay, so here's, here's a kind of a variety of things that we, we can use to clean up that are pretty popular. You know, we've got the simple green, uh, we would cut that with water, mix, mix water. Windex is a, is a good one. Again, that would be cut with water. Ballastol, ballastol and water is a good one. Windex actually is, a, is an excellent uh, neutralizer. In fact, we use it for some of the, some of the chemicals that we blew with that, that rust and put that rust blue finish on, we can neutralize with Windex. So that's, that's why the Windex. Um, and then we can go to some real specialty products. Here's some black powder cleaner number one and some uh, black powder solvent, you know, if you want to buy the, buy the fancy stuff. But I'll tell you, for me, what I've always had the best success with and, and it's the cheapest is just good old Dawn dish soap and warm water. And that's what we're gonna to use today, although we're gonna put a, a couple of spritzes of Windex in there just for good measure as well as a neutralizer. And, and we'll go through this, this process the way I do it, and I'll kind of show you how it may differ from some, from some of the others that I've seen, um, but it's all basically the same. We're just swabbing out this, this black powder residue and trying to clean up that board. Okay, so some of the other things we're gonna to need to, to do this job it's obviously a cleaning rod, a 45 caliber jag, and a bore guide. Now this, this is just a, a uh, brass one that I turned on the lathe. This is really important. Um, I can't tell you how many of these old guns I've worked on where the rifling is just gone right out towards the end of the bore. And of course, you know, our, our brass rod is softer than the, than the steel barrel, but in the early days, of course, they used a lot of steel cleaning rods. But it's also not a matter of the rod itself wearing the, the uh, rifling out. It's all that corrosive and 
and uh, really abrasive residue from black powder that gets on the rod itself and then you just rub that. It's like rubbing sandpaper in there back and forth around the end. So we want to keep that, uh, that cleaning rod centered. Okay, so we've got some uh, Q-tips here, of course some patches, some rags and our, our soapy water, um, Borlite. And now one of the things that we have an issue with when we're cleaning a lot of the lever guns or slide actions like this, some of these old repeaters, is that we can't easily clean from the breech end because we can't get that bolt out without taking the entire gun apart. And these lightnings are a little complicated. Um, and we would want to do that. If we were shooting black powder a lot, occasionally we would want to take it apart and, and clean out from the inside. And while we had it apart, then we could clean from the, from the breech end. But what we don't want to do now, we, if we've got a clean uh, action here, is push all that crap into our action. Now, the last thing we want to do is open up the action to clean it, set it up this way, and start running patches down right into the action. Um, you know, just a, a poor, poor uh, procedure all the way around. So what I do is I'll open the action, turn it upside down, so that when we push that patch through, it falls out the, through the top of the action, or when it's upside down the bottom of the action, and doesn't spread all that nastiness down into the action itself. Okay, so we're going to start off here. Let me change the angle of the camera here, and we'll, we'll show you what we're going to do. Now for those of you who saw that video where I sighted in this old girl with the black powder cartridges, remember we did our first phase of cleanup out there in the field. And that was we took a light smokeless load and shot in behind these, these other black powder loads. And it made a really impressive difference in how much fouling was still in the barrel. Um, and, and we did try to take a little bit of a picture before and after and we'll show that here to you. Now that we've, we've started the cleaning process with shooting that one smokeless load, let's finish it off now with some patches. And this just takes a little while because it takes a while to get all that out of there. So we're just going to dunk that squeeze out the excess and run the patch through and, and this first one at least will be pretty nasty. Got a bore guide up here and then usually it doesn't just fall right out we've got to come up and help it a little bit and there we are it's really it's just black but it's not just terrible. If we hadn't shot that smokeless round through it, uh, that whole patch would just be black as coal. So this one's good enough. We're just going to turn that one around and use that same patch. Because I'm a cheap Scotsman. <laughs> okay, and then we're just going to keep putting patches through until they start getting cleaner. And it, it takes a while. You know, you got to be a little patient. It, it takes a lot more patches to clean a, a uh, black powder bore than it does a smokeless powder, of course. Yep, we're still getting pretty black out of there it's going to take a little while so we're, we'll keep pushing patches through and we'll come back when they start to clean up a little bit and then show you how we finish things off okay so I think you can probably see this we're going from the the first patches we'll get lighter and lighter and lighter and the last one there's just a little bit of gray on it so we're going to put one more patch through um, and then we'll put a dry patch through and then we'll talk about what we're going to do with the action so here's our, our last wet patch, almost clean, and now a dry patch, and 
and there we go. Okay, so now we want to look down in the action and just make sure that we haven't got any fouling down in there. Now this one I, I could look into the chamber and the chamber really looked nice and, and shiny clean so I really don't think we got any black powder down in that the receiver and in the, into the action. Alright, so in this action is where we're going to use our Q-tips and we're just going to get them just damp. So we're going to squeeze out some of the excess so we're not dripping water down into the action. And we're, we're going to just see in here, first going to go into the chamber area and there's just the slightest bit of uh, residue there. So we'll go in a, a little bit further, kind of clean that up, but there's just m not much of anything. Now we're going to just check around in this here. We'll, we'll check on the, on the carrier, the lifter here. And of course this can have some gun oil and some, some stuff on it to start with. And I think that's what we're seeing there. Let's get the other end a little wet. And if, if you start seeing it really, really ugly in here, then probably be a good time to take the, the action apart because we can get to, you know, some of this residue down in deep in that action where you can't get to with a, a Q-tip like this. But this, you know, if, you, if you've ever cleaned up a gun that's had black powder fouling back in the action, what this is is just dirt, normal dirt and uh, old gun oil and stuff. There may be a little bit, but not very much. And some of this we could have uh, pushed out on the, like on the carrier here and right around the uh, breech face here. But still not, not picking up much in here. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll go ahead and do a little more of that and then we'll take you on to the to the next step. Okay, if we've done our job properly, we've got a clean bore now, we've cleaned the action, but we can still have some residue in places. And and that's when we fire the gun, we can get some, some residue build up around the muzzle out here where the bullet's exiting and we're get, getting those escaping gases. When we eject the cartridge, we can get some residue here around the outside of the receiver, um, on the dust cover here on the bolt face. So what I like to do is just, just take another patch. We've, we've got these larger patches here. And by the way, if, if you're um, cost conscious, you can always just make these out of an old t-shirt, a rag, a thin rag of some sort. And we'll, we'll really work the, squeeze the water out of it and then just work around the muzzle here. And there's just nothing here I can see kind of a, a slight kind of a amber color which is probably uh, just old gun oil that was on the barrel and about the same here there might be a couple of grains of spent powder there that could even be from the smokeless powder okay so we've got a, a pretty darn clean gun and you know, we're, we're using water here, so you know, we want to dry things off, so I'll just take a dry patch around where I just worked here and start the drying process. And now we're going to run out into the shop and, and use compressed air to do the rest of the job. All right, so we'll open the action up here, and we'll start blowing from the breech end, so if there's any residual moisture, it goes out the muzzle instead of back into the action. And we'll turn it upside down. And just a good measure out the muzzle. And we should be good. Let's go get this thing oiled up. Alright, so we've got this old girl cleaned up, we've got it dried off, and now it's time to get a little oil on it. You know, we've we've taken all the oils off. And, and so we could rust it really easily. And of course, if we didn't get every little bit of the water out, then it's gonna sit in there and rust as well. So it's really important to get a good gun oil on it. I like to use this break-free CLP stuff. Um, we'll run a, a patch through the bore with, with some of the break-free on it. And then we'll clean up the outside and, and we'll call it good for this particular rifle. Uh, 
a little bit more. Too much oil on your rag is not going to be a problem. Okay, so here we go. And our rag came out, or our patch came out really, really clean, so we think we did a, a pretty darn good job there. So the next step is we'll, we'll do some cleanup on the outside. And uh, let's see, here's my rag here, or just a towel, paper towel, put a little break free on it. And of course, we're going to concentrate on the areas that, that could have had some um, residue first and then we'll, we'll just get some gun oil on, on the whole rifle before we put it away. It'll sit for a few days before we get it back out to go hunting. And to get some gun oil in the action, of course, we just use a Q-tip with some gun oil on it and work it around in here. And of course, as I mentioned before, if we shoot these old girls a lot, then from time to time we really need to take them down and lubricate them, get, get them cleaned and oiled all the internal parts. And uh, these, these lightnings are a little bit tricky, so next time I take one apart here in the shop, I'll, I'll do a take down and assembly episode on these lightnings. All right, so let's take a look at that, that sharps. We'll do this just a little bit differently, but the, the basic concept's the same. Now, the big advantage we have with cleaning the sharps is that we can drop the breech block and clean it from the breech end. So let's just go ahead and take it out, and then we'll, we'll clean it out while it's out. But it looks pretty darn good and clean as it is. And we can look in the chamber, and the chamber is just spotless. So those cartridges sealed up really, really well. We won't take you through the whole process. We'll just kind of show you where we'll get started. Clean it from this breech end. We expect this one, of course, will be a lot dirtier because we didn't have a, a light smokeless load to put in behind this black powder. So it's got quite a little bit more residue than the old light one did. And we've still got our our bore guide, although it doesn't fit all the way in there. It goes right in there where, as far as it needs to. And we're keeping that rod off of the chamber. Yeah, look, that's just black as coal there, and a lot of a lot of spent powder and whatnot. So it's going to take a few more patches on this one, but we'll we'll just keep putting patches to it till it cleans up. And, uh, and we'll finish the process just like we did with that cold lightning. We'll clean up the outside, clean up that breech block, um, then dry everything off, oil it up, and we're good to go. Now just to illustrate how important these bore guides are when we're cleaning our guns, you see that rod looks pretty clean, but if we rub it down with this white paper towel, look at all that. That's what we'd be rubbing up and down that corrosive, abrasive stuff would be right down on our muzzle end and in our rifling, tearing it up. You know, it might not do it this round or the next round, but over and over again, that's going to destroy that rifling down on your muzzle end. So, a couple of dandy rifles today. Both these were built during the black powder era. They're both more than 130 years old. And they're still good shooters because they've been well taken care of. And they'll outlast any of us if, the, if people continue to take care of them as they're shooting them. So don't be intimidated by shooting black powder cartridge guns. It's just real, the cleanup just isn't that bad. So I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Until next time, happy trails from the Cinnabar.